Welcome to our special session this morning. It's a fireside chat on a new collaboration to advance propulsion technology. A propulsion technology that once seemed confined to the pages of science fiction is now edging closer to reality, with the potential to transform submarines, warships, hypersonic aircraft, and even spacecraft. It is called the Magneto-Hydrodynamic Thruster, or simply the MHD Drive. At its heart lies a profoundly elegant idea. Propulsion without propellers, turbines, or moving parts. Instead of mechanical noise, spinning blades, or cavitating bubbles, the MHD drive harnesses invisible forces, electricity, and magnetism to push conductive fluid and generate thrust. The result is motion that is nearly silent, smooth, and futuristic. For decades, this concept has fascinated engineers, scientists, and storytellers alike. In Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October, a Soviet submarine secretly carried a revolutionary caterpillar drive, a dramatized MHD thruster, allowing it to glide through the ocean in eerie silence. Viewers were left captivated by the possibility of a submarine invisible to sonar, moving stealthily with no propeller noise at all. At the time, it felt like pure fiction. Yet the physics behind the story was real, and researchers were already experimenting with prototypes. In fact, the first serious investigations of MHD propulsion stretch back to the 1960s, when Cold War naval powers were eager to explore any technology that might deliver stealth advantages under the sea. The mathematics were solid, the lab experiments promising, but the power requirements were astronomical. Generating strong enough magnetic fields required superconductors cooled to extreme cryogenic temperatures, which meant bulky refrigeration systems. And so, the idea lingered, tantalizing, but out of reach. Then, in the early 1990s, Japan stunned the world with the launch of the Yamato-1, the first practical demonstration of a seawater MHD propulsion ship Using superconducting magnets and electrodes, the Yamato-1 could accelerate seawater directly through its thruster channel, pushing the ship without any propeller. For the first time in history, a vessel glided forward powered purely by electric and magnetic fields. The achievement was groundbreaking, but the Yamato-1 also revealed the brutal engineering trade-offs. To generate useful thrust, it needed Tesla-scale magnetic fields and enormous electrical currents. Its magnets had to be cryogenically cooled with complex refrigeration. The ship's thruster was silent, but the diesel generators powering the magnets still produced a detectable acoustic signature. Worst of all, the top speed was only 8 knots, far slower than even modest conventional submarines. Critics dismissed it as a technological dead end. And yet, the Yamato-1 was a proof of concept that proved the principle worked. The theoretical advantages remain tantalizing. An advanced MHD drive could offer unmatched maneuverability, freedom from cavitation limits, and dramatically lower noise pollution in the oceans. Theoretically, a nuclear-powered MHD submarine could reach 100 knots or more nearly twice the speed of today's fastest submarines. Such performance would not only redefine naval warfare, but also shift the balance of stealth technology, making traditional sonar detection nearly obsolete. So how does this propulsion system actually function? The answer lies in the Lorentz force, one of the cornerstones of electromagnetism. Imagine a conductive fluid, seawater or liquid metal flowing through a channel between two electrodes. A current is applied across the fluid, while a strong magnetic field is directed perpendicular to that current. The result is a sideways push on the charged particles within the fluid. This push, known as the Lorentz force, accelerates the fluid in one direction, and by Newton's third law, the vessel is pushed the opposite way. You can picture this with the right-hand rule. Point your fingers in the direction of the current, align your palm with the magnetic field, and your thumb now points in the direction of the resulting thrust. This simple visualization describes the essence of the MHD drive. When liquid metals such as gallium, indium, or tin alloys are used as the fluid, the effect is strong because these metals are highly conductive, flow easily, and stay stable across wide temperature ranges. 
They are so effective that researchers envision MHD power generators, where hot liquid metal flowing through a magnetic field could directly convert heat into electricity, skipping the entire steam turbine stage. Such systems could, in theory, be more efficient than today's thermal power plants, but building them is enormously complex, and for now they remain confined to research. Seawater, on the other hand, presents far more difficulty. Its conductivity is much lower, meaning far higher fields and currents are required to generate useful thrust. This is why the Yamato-1 needed such massive superconducting magnets, and why, despite the effort, it could only crawl at 8 knots. Today, however, the landscape has changed. High temperature superconductors, or HTS materials, are rewriting the rules. Unlike conventional copper coils, HTS magnets have zero electrical resistance, meaning they can carry currents up to 150 times higher without energy loss. Modern HTS magnets can sustain fields of over 20 tesla, levels that were once unimaginable outside of physics labs. The drawback? High temperature is misleading. These materials still need to be cooled to about 196 degrees Celsius, typically with liquid nitrogen. The cryogenic challenge remains, but it is far less daunting than in the past. Electrodes pose another critical bottleneck. When electric current passes through seawater, bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen form on the electrode surfaces. This not only reduces thrust efficiency, but also corrodes the electrodes rapidly. The Yamato-1 suffered from this problem acutely, but modern research, including DARPA-funded projects, has produced advanced electrode coatings that resist seawater corrosion and maintain performance over longer durations. Combined with modern computational fluid dynamics simulations, which optimize thruster channel design and minimize bubble interference, the once fatal flaws of the 1990s are beginning to be solved. Then there is the question of power. An MHD thruster demands enormous amounts of it. The only practical onboard source is a nuclear reactor. Fortunately, nuclear submarines already carry reactors capable of producing tens of megawatts. The Ohio-class submarines, for example, operate with S8G pressurized water reactors, producing over 45 megawatts. In theory, this is enough to drive a superconducting MHD system. The US Navy has also already demonstrated superconducting propulsion in other areas. A 36 megawatt HTS motor built for the DDG-1000 Zumwalt class destroyers showed that cryogenically cooled propulsion can be built at scale, while being smaller and lighter than conventional copper motors. Pair this with DARPA's electrode breakthroughs, and suddenly, the dream of an operational MHD submarine no longer feels so far-fetched. That doesn't mean speed records will be broken soon. Even under ideal conditions, an MHD submarine powered by a 45 megawatt reactor might achieve 20 knots at around 30% efficiency. That's decent, but still less than what propeller-driven designs can achieve. The real advantage lies not in raw speed, but in stealth, maneuverability, and environmental impact. A submarine that leaves behind no cavitation bubbles and no propeller noise would be nearly invisible to sonar and far friendlier to marine ecosystems. And the applications extend well beyond the ocean. NASA is actively researching how MHD principles could revolutionize aerospace propulsion. At hypersonic speeds, aircraft encounter enormous drag and blistering heat. By using magnetic fields to control the plasma that naturally forms at such velocities, engineers hope to reduce drag, steer shock waves, and even harvest electricity from the airflow itself. If realized, this would allow futuristic hypersonic craft to maneuver with plasma rather than wings, ushering in a new era of flight. In space, MHD concepts are equally transformative. Engines like the Vasimar drive already use magnetic fields to accelerate plasma, achieving efficiencies far beyond chemical rockets. An MHD-based system could provide continuous thrust over long durations, shortening interplanetary journeys, and making deep space exploration more practical. During re-entry, plasma steering could also shield spacecraft from searing heat, replacing heavy ablative shields with electromagnetic control. So where do we stand today? The magneto-hydrodynamic drive occupies a fascinating middle ground. It is no longer a fantasy. It has been built, tested, and proven. 
but it is not yet practical enough to replace conventional propulsion systems. The Achilles heel remains its energy requirements and cryogenic complexity. Yet as superconductors improve, as nuclear reactors grow more compact and powerful, and as corrosion-resistant electrodes become more robust, the obstacles are steadily falling away. The lingering question is whether the first operational MHD submarine will be proudly unveiled or quietly slip into service as a classified military asset. Either way, the momentum is real. The technology that once felt like the stuff of novels and films is edging closer to reality. Because in the end, the MHD thruster represents more than a clever engineering trick. It embodies a vision of propulsion without moving parts, of stealth without sonar signatures, of harnessing the fundamental forces of electromagnetism to move through oceans, skies, and the void of space. It was ahead of its time in the 1990s, but today, as breakthroughs in superconductivity and nuclear power accelerate, its time may finally be arriving.